JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, gun and ammo seized in St. James. A firearm and several rounds of ammunition were seized in Ban Lane, Paradise, in Norwood, St. James, on Thursday, October 22. The police said no one was arrested in connection with the seizure. Between the hours of 2.50 p.m. and 3.40 p.m., a team of officers conducted an operation in the parish where an unoccupied house was searched, the police said. During the search, the Gunsmoke Enterprise M15 rifle and 15 rounds of ammunition, a mixture of 5.56 and .223, were found buried in the ground at the rear of the premises, wrapped in a clear plastic bag. Man arrested in abduction of 13-year-old girl. A Clarendon taxi operator has been arrested after allegedly abducting a 13-year-old girl and attempting to sexually assault her in an area known as Darkness in Kellett's district in the parish on Friday, October 16. According to the police, the 40-year-old man was charged with assault with intent to rape and abduction of a person under 16 years. The police said that about 11.50 a.m., the complainant boarded a car driven by the taxi operator. The accused allegedly pulled off the main road and took the teen to an area where he attempted to assault her. She, however, managed to escape. The police later arrested the accused after it was pointed out to them. A date has been arranged for him to appear in court, the police said. Data entry clerk faces fraud charges. 22-year-old Javon Woolcock has been arrested and charged with several fraud offenses committed at a financial institution in the corporate area the police have reported. They say Woolcock, a data entry clerk, has been charged with conspiracy to defraud, unauthorized access to computer data, and making available device or data to facilitate the commission of a crime. The police said that based on their investigations, Woolcock provided unauthorized information to facilitate criminal activities. The young man is scheduled to appear in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court to answer to the charges on Friday, November 20. Vendor charged for assaulting and robbing accident victim. A Kingston vendor was yesterday arrested and charged with several offenses following an incident in his community on Tuesday, October 6. According to the police, 28-year-old Domoy Turner was charged with robbery with aggravation, assault occasioning grievous bodily harm and malicious destruction of property. The police said that the complainant was driving home from work along Hannah Street when in a bid to escape a head-on collision with an oncoming motor vehicle crashed into a parked motor vehicle along the roadway. The complainant came to a stop and before he could exit his vehicle, he was attacked by Turner who punched him repeatedly in the face and the chest before robbing him of his wallet. The incident was reported to the police and Turner was arrested after it was pointed out by the complainant. Duncan Price laments shooting death of PMP loyalist. The People's National Party's PMP's Imani Duncan Price has expressed regret at the death of Anthony Goss, otherwise called Froggy, one of the party's loyal supporters and volunteers in the Kingston Central constituency. Superintendent in charge of the Kingston Central Police Station, Maldria Jones confirmed the incident yesterday, pointing out that details were unavailable as investigations continue. On Sunday, Goss, a resident of Rome Lane, was shot and killed by unknown assailants around 1 p.m. as he drove his motor car along Wildman Street, spoilers, close to the intersection with Beeston Street. The motor vehicle reportedly crashed following the shooting. Duncan Price asserted that the incident was in no way motivated by politics and blamed gang warfare for turf ownership instead. Duncan Price, who lost her contest for the Kingston Central seat in the September general election against Donovan Williams, brother of Kingston Mayor Delroy Williams, indicated that Froggy had been making strides over many years to transform his negative energies into positivity highlighting that his death may set back a number of promising community programs that were budding in Tel Aviv, where he resided. There is heightened gang activity and men seeking to own and run turf. Let us not mix that up with political preferences. Sadly and unfortunately, Froggy was gunned down in spoilers. Over the last two months in particular, he has been very active, trying to build peace within Tel Aviv specifically. We have really been getting some good traction. 
he had existing relationships with the community, hosting sport events and fish fries and such. He understood the dynamics facing many young men and families impacted by the ongoing war. He was a community man who turned his life around in the last 10 years. She shared that Froggy was using his own vehicle on Sunday to transport delegates to a PNP meeting ahead of the party's presidential election next month. It was after this meeting that he was attacked. With children participating in online classes due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Duncan Price highlighted that Froggy had plans all lined up to start remedial educational classes for primary and high school students in the Tel Aviv area, which she was on board with. He saw it as a need, and we said we could use the corners to begin those classes informally, given the impact of COVID-19. He was that kind of guy. He was very helpful, she said. The mother of Gus's daughter, Tasha Stefan, was adamant that her lover died for peace. She claimed to know nothing about Froggy being a gangster. It was very influential to the young people. Time gone by, only certain families would keep everything for themselves, like vultures and all of that. But he was for everyone and was of the opinion that it doesn't make sense children and women cannot walk the community in peace. He was trying to build peace and was working to make the community a better place. It is so sad that people actually know about it and were actively trying to get him out. He died for peace. He wasn't a thug. He was roughly 50 years old. So maybe he had a past history because nobody not perfect. But from me know him, he not mix up in a warm them something around here. If somehow maybe in past history, when he did younger, people use it against them. Everybody can remember what he used to do for them even before my ban. He was bringing peace and it just so sad that them get him out. Teen charged with murder. The police yesterday charged 18-year-old Jamarle Palmer with murder, conspiracy to murder, illegal possession of firearm and ammunition following an incident on Mountain View Avenue on Saturday, October 3. The deceased has been identified as 26-year-old Siobhan Hall. The police said that about 8.30 p.m., Palmer went to Hall's house and opened gunfire at him after Palmer made a demand from Hall, which was not met. The police were summoned and Hall was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Palmer was subsequently arrested and taken into custody during an operation last Tuesday. His court date is being finalized. Residents at Mustard Seed Communities under COVID quarantine. Members of the Mustard Seed Communities have been placed under quarantine after several staff and residents tested positive for COVID-19. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tufton made the disclosure during the ministry's weekly COVID-19 conference. Dr. Tufton said that the mustard seed communities care for some of the most vulnerable people in society. St. Catherine Health Department started surveillance at the mustard seed community after receiving a positive result for a staff member based on the physical, medical and psychological challenges of the persons under their care, this is at the Mustard Seed community, a decision was made to test all staff, initially to determine if there was a need to test further. Of the 111 staff tested, 16 persons were positive. The health department has now completed testing at Mustard Seed. The 111 staff and 148 residents were tested in addition to the 16 staff members who have returned a positive result, 20 res res residents also tested positive. Three areas have been identified on site for appropriate isolation, quarantine, uh, isolation of asymptomatic positives, quarantining of symptomatic negatives, and isolation of symptomatic positives. Appropriate personnel, personal protective equipment are being provided by the health department as necessary and one medical officer will monitor the home with daily updates from management. $34 million Barracks Road Bridge opens. The new Barracks Road Bridge in St. Mary was officially opened by Minister of the Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Everald Warmington. The new structure, which allows single-lane traffic and replaces a footbridge that was destroyed during major flood rains, was constructed at a cost of more than $34 million. 
Warmington said that the government remains committed to transforming the country's road infrastructure in order to improve lives. He said that many roads and bridges across the island have been constructed and improved over the last several years. State Minister for Industry, Investment and Commerce and a Member of Parliament for South East St. Mary, Dr. Norman Dunn, commended the residents for their patience and understanding during the construction phase. For his part, Mayor of Port Maria, Richard Crary, who is also counsel for the Richmond Division, said he's pleased that the residents can now move about with ease. We're extremely happy for this bridge, and based on the construction, we'll not need another bridge in my lifetime, he noted. Works were implemented by the National Works Agency under the Government of Jamaica's recurrent bridge development program. The new structure can accommodate small and medium-sized vehicles. Three more COVID-19 deaths, 38 new cases. Jamaica has recorded 38 new cases of the novel coronavirus and confirmed three deaths as a result of the virus in the last 24 hours. According to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the new cases consist of seven males and 30 females with ages ranging from 9 years to 85 years. The sex of one of the cases was reported as under investigation. The country's total confirmed COVID-19 cases now stands at 8,638, of which 4,186 are active. Of the new cases, 24 from Kingston and St. Andrew, 5 each are from Trelawney and St. Catherine, and 1 is from Clarendon. The location of three of the new cases is unknown. All of the new cases are under investigation. Meanwhile, the minister said the three new deaths include a 77-year-old male from St. James, an 88-year-old male from St. James, and a 91-year-old female from St. Anne. This brings the total confirmed deaths in the country to 182. Two more deaths were also reported under investigation today. This brings the total confirmed deaths in the country to 182. Two more deaths were also reported under investigation today. In addition, the ministry reported that 61 more patients have recovered from the virus. This brings the country's total recoveries to 4,156. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember, subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.